So I've got this uh, LV, not Elvis, but LV uh, DC brush gear motor. And uh, looks like uh, similar to the diameter 63 motor, um, DC brush. This this will give you some idea. There's a DC brush motor in here and a gear. Um, we can see some of the uh, specs like 12 volt or 24 volt winding. Um, it's got some nominal torque, three Newton meters and some nominal current, five amps, two and a half amps. I'm not sure what this divide by 1.10 is, but uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Of course, a lot more stall torque um, but a, a rated watts of 128 watts. And this one has a gear ratio of 69 to 1. So it's uh, at the output shaft when they talk about the speed of, say, you know, 100, 120 RPM or 60 RPM. Uh, that would be nominal speed, 67 RPM. At that voltage, based on the winding, that's the speed you should go at the output. Of the gear and of course uh, I like to look at things from the perspective of the motor but it's a little tough to get the data um, this is the actual motor that we have here so we can see some of the specky stuff on it uh, a lot of good mechanical there's some electrical nominal tension voltage 24 um, pretty confident that this could work up to 48 because I've tested it it goes faster but Again, we don't want to exceed the speed of the output shaft. That might not be good for the gear over time. And the nominal power, 60 watts. So, you know, 24 volts times a couple of amps, maybe three amps. Uh, so be careful of the continuous current. We don't want to burn up the motor. Um, maybe this is for an elevator or something. So just, you know, while you're lifting the mass, watch the current. Make sure you don't exceed the watts. That's volts times amps speed times current or speed times torque or volts times amps out there's a nominal torque of 14 newton meters and a, a a peak force strong torque 67 newton meters that's just for a short period of time till things heat up so you can see uh at you know 55 rpm you're not going to deliver much current you're down around a couple of amps um, as your speed comes down, they let the current come up. Uh, the stall condition here, your current's huge, but you know this is this is not where you're going to operate normally. So you'll be in in here for speed, right? And then you'll be down here for current. So I'm going to say maybe 12 amps. Um, I'm actually using six amps continuous, uh, 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 maybe 12 peak. Um, actually, the drive I'm testing is 3 amps continuous, uh, 6 amps peak. So I'm not going to get the strong force. But I'll get the continuous out of the motor if I, if I stall it down. Um, a little tricky to come up with the actual uh, current uh, based on the speed here. So if I go slower, of course, my current goes up. So uh, if I look here at 6 amps, I'm crossing it around, you know, greater than 30 RPM. The other trick I'm having to do is I, I don't have any data for the winding. So let's take a look at that in CME and I'll show you, you know, motor model number. I had to guess the inertia. Uh, there's your strong and your continuous. I'm going to put a velocity limit of 120 because that appears to be how fast I go when I use 48 volts. Not that I'm ever going to hit it, but I got to have some headroom there if I'm going to command 60 RPM. Um, so that's theoretical speed. Uh, torque, 2.15 Newton meters per amp. And so I have a, a, a curve I can look at um, for the Newtons and the current. And so I can get the Newton meters per amp. So that's just a calculated value, right? Um, 1.5 ohms. I measured about 2 ohms, but it's got brushes in it. And uh, the inductance is about 1 millihenry you know, measured or determined by the slew rate limit. 
uh, I'll show you how I got this volts per kRPM. This is kind of a little bit fudged because I'm doing estimated velocity. And again, I don't have the actual data, but uh, this is it's okay to tweak this value to get your math model to work out properly. Um, so yeah, just real quick, here's the DC brush motor in here. Um, I've got the shaft of the motor after the gear here. I've, I've marked it with a, a, a nice orange label here. But you'll notice also that I'm using, at the output of the drive, two 150 microhenry inductors rated for 8.5 amps or two or three times that uh, for peak, but 8.5 continuous. This Each one is 150 microhenry's drum core that won't saturate with the PWM amplifier because somebody put filter a filter in the motor here. And let's take a quick peek of that. So here's the filter, right? This is the output of the drive connected with a short circuit or a couple of capacitors, uh, Y caps or X caps, whatever they call them. They go to earth, so don't short the output through a cap to earth. I know it's only one nanofarad, but uh, I'm a little hesitant to say it's a good idea to put a cap at the output of a PWM amplifier. Yes, they've got some inductance here. That's a nice filter, uh, but I'm going to add 150 microhenries, one here and one here before I connect it to the drive. So when the drive looks out, it sees some inductance. Um, I'm going to tune it up for good current loop bandwidth, and you'll see when the caps charge and discharge uh, during the tuning process, but uh, the, the levels are sufficient here. And again, I'm going to show how we're going to look at the um, the speed here. So if I can if I can get the jog to come on. So I've got uh, actually 27 volts. I know it's a 24 volt motor, but I'm giving myself a little extra headroom. Um, it said 55, but I can count uh, at 60 RPM, one rev a second at the output shaft. So I'm going to jog it and count the output shaft. So one rev in one second. So one 1,000, two 2,000, three 3,000. So this is an estimate. Granted, I'm not measuring it precisely, but you'll see that the speed displayed is 60 RPM given 24 volts. Um, I can load it down so it slows down. I can go up to 27, 28, 29 volts, and I'm still regulated. So that's, that's a good approximation from the speed torque curve. So the rated motor velocity of 55 RPM will have some uh, plenty of capability. I'm just tapping down the power supply a little bit. So even with you know low voltage at the drive, a little bit IR drop across the cable at three amps, six amps, you're, you're still good um, for 55 RPM. And so to do that, I had to tweak the, uh, the back EMF volts per K RPM until the math model settled on you know what's actually at the output. Seems a little high, I'm not gonna argue with it. Uh, it's just a math model. I'm sure there's nothing wrong with it. You got some IR drop, some inductive comp in there, but it works, so I'm gonna go with it. Um, the other thing to note here is this is just estimated velocity with the back EMF of the motor, and you can see the pulse width vary as we're increasing the speed here um, so that it has some measure of uh, PWM control. Um, you can see uh, when no current, you get a 50% duty cycle and 6 RPM, a little bit of a pulse width. Um, I think I tested this down to like one RPM, and uh, that's a real, a real slow mover at one RPM. Just barely creeps along. Even six RPM looks a little better. So there's a limit to how low you can go, which is five percent of the DC bus. So just be careful based on the motor's actual back EMF, how fast you're going. Um, so at, at 60 RPM, you can see the, uh, the pulse width shrinks down. So this would up, is applied differentially across the motor winding. So you got full pulse width here. Uh, almost all the 24 volt power supplies across the motor, they're less a little bit prop, perhaps for IR drop. But as you can see, I've also got this encoder. So what we're gonna do is, you know, that attaches to the 
the lift or the conveyor, and then on the conveyor, there'll be a, another rotary to measure the speed of the conveyor. As long as it's not a lot of mechanical slop between the two, uh, we've got a nice estimated velocity in the inner loop, uh, which will, uh, the error between the command and an actual position as the dual or second loop for closing the position loop uh, will command the, the voltage. Uh, it may be possible to also do this uh, with the, you know, bypassing the velocity loop and just use a PID on the position loop, but I like the stability of some inner velocity loop. But then again, it integrates, so, you know, if there's some slop in the mechanical system, put some integral in the position loop and maybe turn off the integral in the velocity loop, um, the command will always rise to make it move. Just watch out for the, the case of hunting. So we've got the data for the motor put in here. Um, it's pretty good approximation. I calculated the initial tuning values and then I did my own tuning. Uh, that's where I found the, the short circuit and the filter in the, in the motor. Um, maybe the bandwidth's a little low, uh, but it, it's not a fast application or too precise. So yeah, 500 Hertz is fine. We can crank that up a little bit, but I'm gonna leave it softly tuned. Um, so we'll take a quick peek at uh, what the velocity loop tuning looks like. We'll say 30 RPM here. And so I'm using half a hertz back and forth, uh, triggered on the function generator, limited velocity, actual motor velocity. I'm watching the bus voltage and the terminal voltage servo, giving it about five seconds. It's just going to go back and forth here at about 30 RPM. So we can see uh, just a little back and forth at 30 RPM. Um, it's pretty incredible stiffness here, but maybe it's like 80 to one gear ratio or something. So pretty, pretty stiff gear. But, uh, as you can see, uh, commanded nice, uh, acceleration and it follows and gets up to speed. There's a little, um, when you get to speed, there's a little bump in the, in the power supply there. So maybe loading 24, hitting 25. It's an unregulated power supply. Um, the math model is showing 10 volts at 30 RPM. So that's probably about 20 volts at 60 RPM. Let's go ahead and test that. And again, um, about one second per rev, so 60 RPM, that, that looks good. Uh, looks like good, still good control. No, uh, no collapsing of the power supply. So yeah, about 20 volts. I got a little bit of headroom here. I'm gonna start voltage limiting pretty soon, a little IR drop. Okay, maybe you need a little bit more than 24 volts to go 60 RPM. Um, yeah, this should be fine on a 48 volt supply too. So. Uh, no need to limit yourself. I mean, 1.5 ohm and 6, six uh, volts is another 9 volts here. So, come on. If you want to get to speed and get some current, you're going to need a little bit more. But be careful. You don't want to burn up your motor. So watch the I squared R drop in the motor and the temperature of the motor. Um, just a quick peek at the current loop tuning because that was uh, tricky here. Um, yeah, you can see, you know, just normal gains here. I'm going to put the gain a little bit high here. So you can see some ringing, excessive ringing. So I cut the gain in half. Um, there's a little bit of integrator wind up, cut the gain in half again. So I usually double till I see it. And then I, there's a little, uh, at the rise and fall, there's a little glitch there as the capacitor, the filter charges up and then discharges. And so I wanted to test that uh, I'm going to use a six amp test, step forward, step reverse. Uh, yeah, I'm, no is the answer to the question. I'm asking for six amps. All right, push the button again. So step forward, step, nice. Look at that, sort of right up to six amps, no spiky, nothing funny. So controllability without short circuits because of the capacitors. I've got the added inductors. Uh, current loop, current loop looks good. Um, 
the only other comment would be for the velocity loop tuning. You notice I've got 120 for the limit. It's an estimated velocity. You really got to like.